On Sunday morning, June 21st, 1981, a massive avalanche of ice and snow on Ingram Glacier killed 10 inexperienced mountain climbers and one guide as they made their way to Mount Rainier's Peak. The victims' bodies lie buried beneath tons of glacier ice in a deep fissure and cannot be recovered. Today, we'll look into the horrible Mount Rainier climbing tragedy in 2022. The story of the ill-fated climbing party and their guides is a cautionary tale about the unforgiving power of nature and the high stakes of adventure in extreme environments. A group of 23 amateur mountain climbers, led by six qualified guides from Rainier Mountaineering Incorporated, left the Paradise Hotel in Mount Rainier National Park on Saturday, June 20th, 1981. They had just finished a strenuous one-day course on fundamental mountaineering techniques. They were making their way to Camp Muir to spend the night. At around 3.30 in the morning, the group set off on the grueling climb to Mount Rainier's Peak, which typically takes five to eight hours, depending on the weather. Three climbers decided to turn around and head back to Camp Muir at this point, claiming they lacked the energy to go on. They were escorted back down the mountainside by guide Christopher Lynch. Unexpectedly, the Ingram Glacier icefall broke up just before six in the morning. Guides Day, Target, and Whitaker could hear the breaking from the top of Disappointment Cleaver and observed a 300-foot-wide wall of ice fall 800 feet before shattering on impact with the cliff. A snow and ice avalanche swept down Ingram Flats and toward the climbing party a few seconds later. The roped together climbers, who were in groups of five, attempted to scramble away from danger as soon as they heard the tremendous sound. It was too late, though. They were carried down the mountainside by tons of snow and ice. Eleven individuals, including guide Tom O'Brien, emerged from the avalanche debris a short while later. But 11 others perished. Only a piece of rope, a ski cap, a pair of ski goggles, and a headlamp were discovered by the remaining guides while searching for survivors near the brink of a deep chasm. The missing climbers appeared to have fallen into the abyss and been buried beneath tons of glacier ice. At 6.10 a.m., as the climbing team approached Disappointment Cleaver, a senior guide named John Day radioed the National Park Service Ranger Station in Paradise to request assistance locating 11 missing climbers. When the other two guides guided the remaining climbers back up to Camp Muir, Day and the two guides remained at the crevice. The weather started to shift shortly after that. As the wind increased, snow began to fall. By late Sunday afternoon, 20 guides from Rainier Mountaineering Incorporated, including the renowned mountaineering twins James W. Jim and Louis W. Lou Whitaker, NPS Rangers, and Mountain Rescue Association volunteers had arrived in paradise. The rescue team quickly ascended to Camp Muir. Still, they could not conduct an expedition to Ingram Flats that evening due to poor weather. The rescue crew radioed the ranger station at Paradise on Tuesday morning, June 23, 1981, to inform them that any additional search attempts would be risky and ineffective. The rescuers left Paradise that afternoon after the search for the buried climbers was abandoned. On July 7, 1981, Mount Rainier National Park Superintendent William Briggle convened a board of inquiry into the deaths of the 11 mountain climbers, as is customary for all national parks. The board found that the guides were experienced mountain climbers who adhered to accepted mountaineering practices. They had led the climbing party up the safest, most heavily traveled route to the summit. They had paused to rest in a protected area on Ingram Flats. Family and friends of the 11 tragic climbers gathered at the Paradise Visitor Center Auditorium on Tuesday, June 22, 1982, the tragedy's first anniversary, to attend a private memorial service. With permission from Park Superintendent William Briggle, they established a permanent memorial in the foyer composed of an enlargement of a photo found in a camera recovered from Ingram Flats belonging to victim Jonathan Lettioni and a brass plaque listing the climbers' names. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more thrilling stories like this. Thanks for watching.
See you next time.